Welcome back to the Music Bar Podcast. This is episode 49 and my name is Chris. Thanks for joining me today and um, it's been a while since I did the last one but I've been waiting for a specific reason and it's finally arrived last week Friday the 14th of April. Metallica released 72 seasons and I've been waiting for this like most Metallica fans for a while and heard four songs from the album already and those four songs were great. Expectations of this album for me were, were very high. And finally to have it on my phone, waiting for the vinyl to turn up in the post. But to finally have it and to be able to listen to this um, has been pretty uh, interesting. The reason being. So, um, I haven't been very well in the last week. So, I couldn't go to the cinematic... Um, Metallica listening party the night before to listen to the whole, uh, whole album at the cinema. So for me, it was next day, three in the morning, I was, wasn't was well, but I woke up and I put the headphones on and listened to the very last track. Um, that track being Inamorata. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And um, I knew it was going to be 11 minutes. And I love those epic Metallica songs, and Metallica do that better than a lot of other bands anyway. So to finally be able to hear a new track that goes for 11 minutes, really, oh, I couldn't wait. It was just going to be so good. So I heard it, and I have to say I didn't like it. Um, I didn't know why I didn't like it. I felt at first, when I first heard it, that new, um, that, that song, that it was very repetitive. Um, and when you're playing an 11 minute song, you can't be repetitive because you have to keep the listener, um, entertained enough to keep going, you know? So I first heard it, didn't like it, went back to sleep, woke up the next day and I again put the headphones on and listened to it again. And again, still felt it was repetitive, but now a bit of time have gone by. I've actually listened to this song and the whole album quite a lot, um, and I have to say, it's it's phenomenal. It really is. And for me, some songs I listen to when I first hear a new song, um, I don't like it straight away, but it grows on me. And this whole album has grown on me um, to the extent where it's one of the best albums I think Metallica have ever written. And that last song, especially, is one of the greatest songs I've ever written, in a Morata. So... Um, what I'm going to do today is just talk quickly about each song. Some songs I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, and I'll show you a bit of um, why I like that song. Um, there's some kind of chef, I don't know his name, but you see him putting salt on his meals somehow like that. Well, this is what I think this is like. This whole album is like that. You get a 10-minute song, and in this 10-minute song or 6-minute song of Metallica, there's just little spices all dropped in there which make you go, oh, that's new, oh, that's interesting, and it keeps you entertained for that time. And I find that those are the things that have made me love this album more than I expected after hearing it for the very first time and not really liking it. So um, I'm going to drop a few of those spices to you when I listen to each song. Um, not every song, some. But again, if you have a chance, go grab yourself a pizza, uh, go buy a Pep Ham Chick pizza, that is, and go listen to this album and get away from the videos, get away from any surrounding noise, distraction, put on headphones or just listen to loud music, but close your eyes and listen to these songs in a different way than what you normally would and you probably start realising what I'm talking about. So... Um, that's what I did. I uh, listened to the whole album a bunch of times in bed, dark room and headphones only and just listened and it changed my opinion on these songs pretty quickly to be honest. Um, so if you're one of those guys who commented or you've said to me that you think this album is worst, <laughs> worst <laughs> St. Anger, um, you especially go and grab a Pepe Chick pizza and sit down and listen to it the way I just said it. I think you might be surprised um, at how good this album is. 
like I said, I didn't like it at, at first. Definitely grew on me. And that's why I'm doing this podcast whole, uh, solely on this album. To make sure people who don't like it um, will understand that underneath there is something that is phenomenal. Um, so just quickly before I go into the first songs, I want to say Kirk Hammett, his playing on this is phenomenal. Um, he has credit to some of these songs now as well, writing credits, and so does Rob, which is great. And uh, Kirk's playing, I'm not going to, every time I'm going to play about a song, talk about a song, I'm not going to say Kirk's great. I'm, I'm just saying it right now, Kirk's playing on this whole album is really, really good. And Rob's playing is, obviously those guys are the best at what they do, so Rob's playing is really good as well. Um, it's really nice to hear some tunes have a little bit of a, bass solo-ish kind of part or bass orientated pieces which is something I think Metallica should have been doing for such a long time since he's been in the band now for 20 years um, he's this phenomenal player up there with Cliff easily you know um, but he should be allowed to do this more often and I think it's great that they finally allowed him to do it um, you hear the beginning of uh, Sleep Walk My Life Away um, the intro to that is bass and it's so good so just a bit of spice, I guess you could say. Uh, Lars's playing is Lars. You know, I have no issue with his drumming ever, from the beginning to from the beginning of Metallica forty one years ago to now. I think his drumming is great. I'm no drummer. Some people who are drummers say he's rubbish. I don't. I think he works really, really well with what they do in this band. So um, yeah, Metallica in those three is they're all spot on. But for me. I said it originally when I first started hearing the songs drop through. Um, I think this album is all about James. His lyrics, his singing power is amazing. His voice is phenomenal. He's 59 years old and he's getting better and better. And then, like I said in the podcast in the past, you know, you've got people like Vince Neil who are struggling. You've got people like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard struggling with his voice. Um, John Bon Jovi even. And those guys don't sing this style of music. But James has got it on point. And if not, he's got it better now than ever. So, um, and his lyrics, this is his journal. He doesn't write a journal. He writes lyrics. He said that in an interview. And I think this whole album, it's for James. To me, it's all about James and his words. Um, some of the stories I've heard, even from Kirk Hammett, saying that they needed a certain piece of guitar playing or a piece of music for one of the songs. And an hour later, James has written a whole lot. So, um, he's a phenomenal guitar player. He's a great writer. But his voice in this is spot on. And you will hear it from the very first words he says in the opening song, 72 Seasons, where he comes out and screams out nicely, feeding on the wrath of man. Um, when he says it, when he sings it, it's just so powerful. So, um, yeah. Uh, listen to this podcast with an open mind. If you don't like the album, listen to this and go away with it in your own way. But I recommend no distractions, headphones on, dark room, and just listen to these songs and you'll understand why I came around to why I think this album is one of the best. So here we are with the opening track, 72 Seasons. Now, there's two things in this song I just want to quickly touch, uh, show you. Um, it's the opening verse well, the opening verse, but the way that James sings it. I'm going to play the intro um, until I stop just after he sings that part, and I'm going to go jump to another section quickly, and that'll be all we talk about on 72 Seasons. But this song here, um, I've heard them talking about the, the whole album, the guys from the band, and they're all saying about the whole new wave British metal um, style, and that's what this song is all about. There's a lot of uh, Thin Lizzy to talk about this whole album, they talk about Deep Purple, um, a lot of harmonising in in, um, in the songs with guitars, like an octave, a unis unified uh, unison um, guitar solos, octave different, which is an ode to the guys out of um, Thin Lizzy and Iron Maiden. But yeah, we'll start with this one here. I'm just going to play straight from the beginning of the song, and... Um, then I'll jump to another section and that'll be all for that one. So have a quick listen.
How good is that? Phenomenal. This half time feel. Oh, so good. Now, listen to James sing in a second. So when he screams, feeding on the wrath of man, it's just so powerful. And he sings that line quite a bit during the whole um, video, but during the song, but it just shows how good his voice is. Um, what a great intro to a song, you know. It's it's so heavy. But the change of the halftime feel is, it's just beautiful. It really is. So that's one piece I wanted to show you quickly. Um, but then there's a solo piece, which kicks in around 5.32 and this solo to me is just amazing. Kirk's at his best. I've kind of like thought about it as in four pieces of music, like four different styles. It obviously goes for about a minute, but the last part is repeated twice and it's kind of a harmonized as well. But it's like he's that's one, one style, one style, you know, and yeah, it's just really, really good. So I'll play that quickly for you now. Um, then we'll jump into the next song. Different style again, I feel. How good is that? I love this piece. And harmonize. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And his voice is just amazing. But yeah, after listening to um, an interview, reading an interview from Kirk about his guitar playing and getting bored playing the same music over time, you know, Master Puppet solos and bits and pieces, he's been given free range to do what he likes in this. And he kind of just said he went in there and just played it with his eyes closed. And if they liked it, they liked it. And I think that's where he is as a musician. Um, and I think he proves he can play guitar and write some amazing pieces of music because... His solo effort he did a while back called Portals is phenomenal. It's all instrumental. So credit to him, credit to the band. This song is a great opener. I can't wait to hear this song live. Um, but that's definitely a top up there, top top song, you know, to open up the album with 72 seasons. So here we are on track two, Shadows Follow. And for me, this song is a pretty cool song. It catches it's it grooves along all the way through. It's actually really nice to listen to. Um uh, but there's a part of this which I found is the, what I say is the spice, you know, and it's part of the rhythm. And I'm going to play it to you right now. It's only just be quick and short this one, but um, great song. But listen to this how they, they do this. He he sings the first line, and then the rhythm does this do do do. And that's repeated all the way through the song, obviously. But listen to this and how effective it is. Um, we'll just play that right now.
love it. I'm, I find that it's a little bit of spice to keep you entertained because it keeps the rhythm interesting to me. So I really like this song, and that rhythm to me is just phenomenal. It's really good because it just it changes up what you're not expecting. And that's why I think Metallica do really well. You might think it goes here, and they'll do this. And that's what makes them so good. Anyway, that's just enough for Shadows I Follow. So the next song is Scribbing Suicide. Um, this has got a, such a great rhythm through this whole thing. The the uh, It just travels so well through. There's two pieces I want to show you. Again, it's Kirk this time as well. Um, just listen to what he's playing. It's just phenomenal. It really is. It really grabs you, you know. So have a listen to this. This solo is at 3 minutes 28. Listen to that cool rhythm. Oh, it's just a, such a great piece of music. But then there's this last solo at the end, um, outro. Uh, it's, again, they're doing so well, these guys. This is a great piece as well. Listen to this. See, that's just phenomenal. It's beautiful. Those two guys playing that together, an octave different. So yeah, that's uh, Screaming Suicide. So this song is called Sleep Walk My Life Away. This is the first time you hear on the album that Rob has something to say, I guess you can say. Um, this beginning piece here is Rob laying down the groove, you know. So have a listen to this. This is really good. This is Spice with lots of chilli, if you want to put it that way. But listen to this. It's beautiful. What a great intro. See, that is just phenomenal. I love it. It's so different to anything that they've, they've done before. Um, and it's so good utilising Rob. Um, but what a cool little groove that was at the very beginning. And, um, yeah, really happy to hear that kind of thing coming out now. And I hope down the track into other albums they use his ability a little bit more to create some beautiful rhythms. But that's, that's uh, Sleep Walk My Life Away. Bit of spice and chilli there. So the next song is called You Must Burn and this is featuring Rob on backing vocals. He has mentioned in an article that he actually really stepped forward and wanted to do this and really enjoyed singing. Um, the way they, the style of singing is quite strange. Um, looking forward to hearing it when they're doing it live but um, it's kind of like psychedelic, Black Sabbath kind of like style. Um, but it's, it's catchy, it's really good but then I'll play a bit of that where I believe it's him singing and then um, I'll go into the solo which are really, that, that line they use in the solo is really, really cool. So that's um, this song, You Must Burn. We'll play that now for you. A bit haunting. I love this 
sounds so nice. Really catchy, got a nice book. Yeah, great, excellent. Um, well done, Rob. Again, great rhythm, but yeah, what I'm with those melodies, uh, the solos, Kirk, really good stuff. So this song, Luxa Turner, is the very first song they released last year when they announced everything was going on. Um, it's the shortest song, I believe, on the album, and I reckon this is going to go crazy live when they play it. Um, it's such a killer. It's so fast, thrashy, heavy. I'm going to play a quick, the first verse into the first chorus for you right now, just to get an understanding how good this is, and that'll be all, but... Um, Straight, simple, straight to the point. Thrash, well done Metallica, great song. And um, yeah, listen to this. And listen to his voice again. Listen to the James's voice. Listen, I said good that. Yeah. Oh, chills. So good. That's Luxie Turner. So, <laughs> this song is called Crown of Barbed Wire. And the first part I'm going to show you quickly is it probably one of the things I hate about this song. And I've actually read this from a few people in comments here and there. They just hate the way that James sings the word wire. So, and I, I can't handle it either. I don't like it either. So, I'm just going to quickly play because not everything they do is amazing. Most of it is, but there's always the little things here that I just can't, can't handle. And I've read quite a few people don't like this. So, I thought I'd show, I'd show you this. He sings the word barbed wire, and the way he sings and pronounces um, the word wire just drives me insane. Here we go, here. Ugh. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. But um, other than that, listen to this section here. It's it's really heavy. It's um. Do, 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 do. So good. Listen to this. I love it. So heavy. Juicy. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Not the wire part. The heavy later on. So yeah, that's our crown of barbed wire. So here we are with the song called Chasing Light. Um, ignore the video, please. Ignore it, but um, again, this is a song that Kirk has got uh, credit for as well, writing credits, and this song grooves along nicely. I'll show you two spa parts of this song which I really enjoy. The first part being just the way they build up on this one as well. It's such a cr uh, catchy ri uh, rhythm. <laughs> Um, that part there was just so good. <laughs> I love it. And then you got um this part here. Great. 
great singing. Really good singing. Yeah, just oh, can't get enough of this album. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that, that's uh, Chasing Light. Listen to that all the way through. Find your own pieces of uh, spice, but those two just, they just ring out to me as gold. So this song is If Darkness Had a Friend, and this was also one of the ones that was released earlier. Um, so nothing new here, to be honest. It's It's a great song. It's not new to our ears, but I just want to play the part of this song that I love. It's the beginning part. It's already gone for, when I, say, when I press play, it's already gone for one minute. So the build up of this is just phenomenal. It's so powerful. And I'll play from here a little bit onto when he starts singing. And you just imagine being in the audience and listening to this build up, build up, build up, and then start singing when he starts um, singing the word temptation. It's so good, um, but yeah, have a listen to this. Listen to this. How heavy is that? That is... Whoa! Mwah. Heavy. How beautiful is that? So heavy. It's so heavy. And it builds up, like, like I said, I started playing that a minute into the song already. So it's a slow build up. So you should listen to the whole song and hear that build up. I don't have the time for that here. But to hear that and then go into the, just the heaviness of it. Oh, ooh, yummy. And then the temptation. It's, oh, amazing. Next. So this next song um, is called Too Far Gone. And uh, I love the way that he sings this line. Um, it's not actually the first. He sings Too Far Gone, but he, he sings it twice. And then he sings, Am I Too Far Gone to say, Save I Can Make It Through the Day? I love the way he sings that. And then after that, I'll show you a bit of a groove fest on the guitar, which I love. Um, and then we'll go to the next song. Um, but yeah. Just listen to he sings this part. See, I love that. I, I love how he just goes, you know, takes it somewhere you don't really expect it to go. It's very brief. That's the thing I think, for me personally, I love the way that James sings because he does a few things different to what you expect. And I like that because it keeps me entertained in these songs which you go for a while. Um, the other thing with this song I love is the solo section, a very brief solo section um, at 2.30. Yeah, that. It's just so catchy. It's just so good. So that's the song Too Far Gone. So here we are at Room of Mirrors. Now this song is the second last song, number um, 11. And 
I'll say right now, I think they have finished this album off. There's 12 songs all together, but from number 9, 10, 11, and 12, I think those four songs are so good to end this album with. Um, Room of Mirrors is one of my favourite songs on the album. Um, but those last four to me, if you play them all in one go, you'll find that these four just fit perfectly and it's such a great way. But this song here is one of my favourites, Room of Mirrors. I'll show you um, three parts of this song which I really do enjoy and I think makes this song stand out to me. Um, the first part is at 38 seconds. It's how he sings these verses. So I'll just play you one verse, which obviously he repeats over time the way he sings it, but his melody, um, the melodic nature behind the, the line and how he sings it is, to me, a hook. And that's why I like about um, some of these songs, the way he does that, and James's voice. So listen to this, for starters. This is the very first verse. See, that to me is just the perfect scenario in how he's sung that song. And it keeps you entertained for those verses. So, spice, chili, whatever you want to call it, beautiful. Uh, the next part of the song I want to show you is um, this riff at 3 minutes 33. Uh, sorry, 3 minutes 36. Um, these guys are on point. <laughs> so, yeah, listen to this. This is so great. Rini. The harmony, amazing. So that's that. Um, again, that's all the way through this whole album. They're doing this um, unison kind of guitar soloing, a nod to the guys from Iron Maiden, Thin Lizzy, but yeah. That's so catchy. And the last part, um, which I want you to pl uh, listen to, is at 4.45. This is the part of the outro. This is how heavy it is. It's just gold. Look at the drums. What well I love. Wow, yeah. How beautiful is this? Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. So yeah, Room of Mirrors, one of my favourite songs on the album. Again, listen to it, headphones, no distractions, and listen to it. <sighs> Next. So here we are with the very uh, last track of the album, Inner Marata. Um, this is my favourite song on the album. It's 11 minutes... So over 11 minutes. It's epic. Um, like I said before, I couldn't wait for this song because I knew it was going to be long and I knew it would most likely be one of those songs that I just end up falling in love with and it has done that to me this time as well. Um, again, I first heard it and didn't like it. To me, it sounded repetitive. I didn't like the fact that they sang the chorus and those words so often. Um, it, there's a section in the, in the air as well where it breaks down to just some bass and he starts singing the words, which are pretty much a chorus, but he just changes it around a little bit. Same words, but just different way of singing them, which I felt was a bit of a cop-out at first. Um, but when you listen to the whole thing over and over again and start seeing what he's done, and it's just phenomenal. <laughs> it really is. 
Um, a beautiful song. It's so well written. And for me, this is, I guess you could say, St. Anger came out of um, James and the whole band being just messed up and never dealing with what they had to deal with as kids and going through the death of Cliff and all those things. So um, he went to rehab, obviously. They weren't dealing very well with, it, um, dealing with each other very well. He went to rehab and they came up with St. Anger. Um, we all know that James went to rehab only a couple of years ago and um, he's come out of it looking well, healthy. Um, apparently he's got he's seen someone new. He's been divorced now from Francesca after 20 odd years. So he's got a new girlfriend. Um, he, he looks so healthy and wealthy, uh, so healthy but and wealthy. Um, but this to me is his closing part of the journal and he's singing this song for his life if if it means something like he's really like reaching out there and telling you i've been hurting this is me fixing myself this is this is it so lay it out on the table you've got me you're gonna see james in a nutshell in this song and um there's parts of this song I'll show you. It's, I'm not going to show you heaps of it, but it's, yeah. Um, the music, the way he sings it, but we'll just, we'll just go through a bit, bit and pieces here. Bits and pieces here. So um, this song is full of riffs. It's got so many cool riffs. So that's one thing, if you like it, you're going to hear a lot of riffs all the way through. Um and it also, if you really wanted to know, I felt I felt it could have been called My Friend of Misery number two. <laughs> I know they've done Unforgiven one, or Unforgiven, The Unforgiven uh, number two, or uh, two, and then they did it again later on, number three. Um, this could have been called My Friend of Misery um, also. <laughs> but um, they've gone with calling it Inamorata, so that's fine by me. It's This is a journey, an epic journey. So... Um, yeah, let's start listening to... The song's already gone for 6 minutes or 6 minutes 43. I'm going to start playing it here. And um, when he sings the words, no, 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 you'll start hearing this beautiful, epic piece of music. <clears throat> Next piece is right now, it joins onto it, but this is just listen to this beautiful part of the solo. That part there where it goes doo -doo -doo -doo. that to me is going to be hard to pull off live and not sound too trebly titty but let's hope they can do it keep going Now you're going to hear the word misery again, 
and it sounds like I'm not 100 percent sure. It sounds like Rob is screaming it, and then he does it again afterwards with James. But I'm not really sure. But I love how they've put these two different ways of singing um, the word misery into this, like a backing ground vocal, backing backing vocal. And it sounds so raw, like it was a mistake, but they went, let's put it in there. It sounds really good. So you hear that right now, and then again, again after that, the word misery by the backing vocalist. And it's just a little piece of spice that make you go, hey, what, would I, what did I just hear? Beautiful. Love this rhythm. So, <laughs> the last party I want to show you, just stuff coming up in a second. Um, when I first heard this song I thought they'd sang the word misery way too much but who am I but listening to this now I went and saw Metallica play on the Black Tour back in 93 or 94 in Melbourne um, a bunch of my mates and I went across to see it and I remember they sing a song called Creeping Death and you end up standing on they do it everywhere when you go live um, when you see them live you stand up and you, you're chanting, die, die, die. And it sounds so mature for 15,000, 10,000 people to be doing that. But when you're there in the audience, and I was back then, I was like a teenager. Um, no, early 20, 20 year old. Um, stand there going, die, die. And you feel part of this group of people doing this. It's not that you're going to go outside and start killing people or anything. Or, you know, going crazy. It's just what that song needed. And it worked really well. And you're part of the emotion of it. And it's, yeah, it was great. Well, what you're going to find now on this song, to me. Um, they sing the word misery, then my misery. Misery, my misery. And then they go off. I believe it's all, th could be all three of them. Um, singing that live down the track. When they do live performances of this song. Um, when I picture this, I picture them standing on stage, the three of them are singing, misery, my misery, my, and then James breaks off and sings a line while the other two keep going on. And I, I get really like, this is just phenomenal, um, piece of music. So listen to it now and close your eyes and picture you're watching these guys play live and you're just singing along with them going, misery, my misery. And, um... See how it makes you feel. It's amazing. It really is a, a phenomenal piece of um, music. And I'm going to play it again for you because I love it so much. And it really, to me, it's James screaming out, help, I guess you could say. But um, one more time for that one. Ah, 
Oh man, it's so powerful. It's such a great song. You really have to listen to this song from beginning to end um, with nothing to distract you at all. If you've got the best headphones in the world, put them on. If you've got the best speakers, put them next to either side of your head and just listen to this song. You are not going to be sorry. This is going to be a great song live. And I can't wait to stand there and sing along with this part of this part of the song. Um, so yeah. Epic Metallica. <laughs> anyway. Next up. So <laughs> there we are with the album of 72 seasons. This I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Um, it is really just uh, a great album. Um, like I said, if you think it's going to be worse than St. Anger, that I've read comments, you're incorrect. I pretty would have agreed with you the first five minutes I heard this album, but no, you're wrong. This is phenomenal. Give it another try. Grab your pepperoni, ham, chicken, dumplings, and give it a go, mate. Um, but overall, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like, and... I want to touch base before I go. Just one more thing. These videos I've been releasing. The videos I find are... This day and age, you have to have something... Like MTV did it. Rage did it here in Australia. Countdown. All those shows. They they bring a visual to the song. Obviously. And Metallica did it with their very first one um, called One. Back in 89. And it brought them a lot of attention because they didn't have a video before that for three albums. Uh, yeah, for three albums. So they've always released pretty good videos as far as I'm concerned. But for right now, I have to say I'm really disappointed with most of the songs I've done, the videos I've done. I found, for me, the there's a bunch of videos, maybe four or five, which I felt were okay because you've got the band members in it. If I'm going to sit down and watch... And listen to a song and watch them um, play this video. The video has to be entertaining enough for me to go, yeah, I'll keep watching that each time, knowing what's going to happen. Um, and when they got the band members actually in this, the clips, it's okay. You can watch that all day long. They got two cartoony ones, which I just think are just rubbish. Um, and it's like they've gone to a marketing guru and said, okay, mate, we need to get some videos done for the video, uh, for this album. What do you got? And the guy's sitting there going, okay, well, we do a package deal. You get five with you guys included. And we do two cartoony ones for you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, whatever's remaining, we'll figure out at the time. So they've gone into a big warehouse, recorded five videos with lights. And each time they went, okay, put this T-shirt on and put this guitar on, and we'll film it. You stand there with these lights in the background. Okay, cut, done, finish, wrap. Next, change your T-shirt and change your guitars. Um, we'll put lights in different places, um, and we might put a screen over here. How good's that, a screen? And that would change everything. And they'll sing another song and mime it to it, you know? And then they'll finish that one and go, right, that's it. And then they go, well, we've only been here for 20 minutes. Let's do another one. Okay, well, let's put three screens up. And then we'll change the color from of light to from yellow to red, and maybe spin around you. How good's that? And then they do that, you know, and then so forth. So they get all these videos done in one day, which is great. I don't even care how long it takes you, but as a person who's viewing this stuff, who wants to see these videos along with hearing these great songs, you kind of go, "What are they doing?" I find it really disappointing. Um, but then again. You've got a package deal. Five songs of videos with lights. Okay, well now you've got two with cartoons. And these cartoons are just stock images of characters that kind of look like James and the other members of the band, but also look like the guys out of Macedon if you look at the right angle. So um, I find that a bit disappointing. And then you've got a song, a video... <laughs> um, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. It's like, um... The song Too Far Gone. 
I just looked at it and went, what the hell am I watching? It's like, honestly, the intern at the building has had created a video and it faltered and it went all weird and they went, well, you can put your faces in there. They'll appear somehow, but the whole rest of it is just rubbish. And to sit and watch, the, if you go watch that, go watch the um, Too Far Gone video. You'll see what I'm talking about straight away. Um, and I actually posted on this podcast. You'll see some of it there as well when I talk about that song. These videos are just laughable. Um, when you're when you're going out in the world and doing a tour like this, and you're going to try to intrigue people with music, put a video to it that that captures our attention and not hate it because. That song, Too Far Gone, well, that is some shit I've never seen on anything. And then you've done another video recently called um, Off the Song Chasing Light, which is just as bad, to be honest. It's a yellow background, and the guys are just their shadows walking around. <laughs> like, come on, guys. That's shit. And it's no reason for it. You can do better than that. I got mad in one of my podcast ages ago with Megadeth when they released their videos and they were doing substandard videos at a beach with a army scene, you know? And you look at it and go, well, it looks like a pier from from <laughs> um, one of the beaches on the coast of California. And here you guys are, you, they are just releasing this video of you moving around your arms and, oh, it's just pathetic. So those two clips are just rubbish. Um... And I really hope down the track they do something better. They haven't released a video yet for um, Inamorata. So please, fingers crossed, make that an epic video. Um, an epic video. November Rain from Guns N' Roses or Estranged. Estranged video is phenomenal. So those kind of videos, you can appear in one at least, which is not in a warehouse with lights. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Yeah, fingers crossed that comes out all right, but the rest of it is pretty bad. Um, those cartoons are just pointless. Oh, and the video for <laughs> the video for Crown of Barbed Wire has to make you laugh. It's it's I don't even want to talk about it. Um, it's like a uni project, and it's shit. So anyway, that's my only downfall so far. The songs where they appear in the band, the, the guys appear apart from Chasing Light, um, when they're playing their musical instruments and they're doing what they do, fine, I can handle that kind of stuff. Um, it's like Moth, Moth to the Flame, same kind of thing. But these cartoons are rubbish. Chasing Light is absolutely pathetic. And um, Crown of Barbed Wire, come on guys, get better than that. Um, and you must... Uh, yeah, just bad. So I hope they can do better next time with these videos. But that's it for me. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Went from a great album to a bad video comment, but um, it needed to be said. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go and see them in August in Los Angeles. Um, Pantera is obviously playing as well as Mammoth. I can't wait, to be honest. Two nights, no repeat weekend. I really hope they play in a Murata. Um, but yeah, hope you hope you liked the video. Please subscribe and like. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time on episode 50. Cheers, rock on.